chapter three of Chooser Every Day or Leafer. Men aren't supposed to understand women. I finally realized that I'm not supposed to understand my woman. I'm only supposed to love her and all her wild mystery. I wouldn't want to ever completely understand a woman anyway. Like most men, once I understand or completely figure something out, or even think I have, I grow bored of it, hungry for any next challenge. Recently, I freebased every Mount Everest documentary on Netflix. I was stunned by how many male climbers, soon after their moment of sweet, imperious glory standing above everyone else on the planet, immediately started dreaming of doing it again, though with some added twist to make it harder next time, like refusing bottled oxygen or taking a route known to kill even more men. And Everest kills one in 40 who attempts to climb it. And that's on the easy route. To stop pushing at the edges of what is possible is like death to masculine being. A more feminine core woman is the spiritual Mount Everest for a more masculine core man. And for a more masculine core woman too. He shouldn't ever hope to truly conquer her or even think that he has. For what then? Boredom is what then. Quick break. Uh, I'm reading chapter three of Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. If you want to get the first two chapters, they're in the videos before this and subsequent chapters are uh, coming soon. Helicopter. Over the next few months, I am actually uh, reading the entire book on YouTube. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. But the book is available on Amazon, on Audible, on all of the platforms. And again, I'm going to be reading it here on YouTube in the coming months. Uh, subscribe to this channel to make sure that you get access to these videos as soon as they come out. I'm the author, Brian Reeves, Brian with a Y Reeves, and I'll be taking you into the behind the scenes stories, taking you deeper into the material as I go. It's going to be a fun ride. I'm coming to beautiful spots to do readings and subscribe. Join me. All right, let's dive back in. We were talking about how every man, every masculine core person, which could include women as well, needs challenge in their life. We rise to challenge. And so many of us in intimate relationships, as I'm reading this chapter, so many of us in intimate relationships, and this was certainly my dilemma, is that I'm trying to, in a way, I'm taught to conquer a woman, to understand her, to think I know her, to get her. But the problem with that is as soon as I think that I do, I'm going to be bored. I'm not going to be interested anymore. I'm going to, you know, go get flaccid, if you will, and, and look for challenge elsewhere. So uh, I was just talking about Mount Everest documentaries on Netflix and how you know, men, once they climb Mount Everest, a lot of them just want to do it again, but do it harder this time. So uh, he shouldn't hope to ever truly conquer a woman or even think he has. For what then? Boredom is what then. We challenge hungry men need to learn to honor this great mystery that is a woman. Mic check. There is a reason masculine men are drawn to the raw wilds in nature. It's where we know instinctively that we can go to shake off our petty little ego selves that rob us of our life force, like pickpocket thieves in the city subway. The immensity of nature overwhelms that small self so we can connect with the deep stillness of eternity. And stillness is the essential nature of our masculine energy. Yet the wilds of nature also challenge us. A man's sense of worthiness is largely derived from his ability to rise, meet, and ultimately overcome any force that would otherwise destroy him. Like the intense emotions often easily conjured up by many women, the raw forces of nature can draw a man to rise up in every way. One of the most thrilling moments in my life happened on a stormy autumn night at my parents' backwoods home when I was a teenager. A nasty torrential downpour was threatening to burst the leaf-clogged gutters hanging precariously from our roof when my stepfather looked stern at me and said, let's go. After donning slick raincoats and grabbing a rickety metal ladder from the garage, we stepped face first outside into a cold sideways rain. Clawing our way up the slippery ladder, we rounded our bodies onto a roof much steeper and more precarious than it looked from the ground. 
which suddenly felt so far beneath my feet that I had to fight off a sickening nausea. The winds howled all around us, thunder boomed above, and countless pellets of rain pelted me from every angle. My mom and sisters watched from inside, safe, warm, huddled together, framed and glowing in the light of the living room window. I bent dangerously towards the edge railings, careful not to lose my balance. Hot day. As I scooped out thick muddy clamps of wet leaves, as I, excuse me, as I scooped out thick muddy clumps of wet leaves and twisted branches, tossing them to the muddy earth far below, I had one delighted thought. This is fucking awesome. There's just something profoundly satisfying about taking on the wild, regardless of whether I even live to tell about it, though that's always preferable. This is why the masculine creature delights at slashing his way through wild forests, scaling treacherous mountain trails, and sailing across vast oceans that in one moment may bathe him serene like a king in golden moonlight, and in the next, unleash a rage that dumps him overboard like rotting refuse. Wild is the nature of the feminine. She drives mad the mortal man full of arrogance in believing he could ever conquer her. What is the wild woman? Writes Clarissa Pinkola Estes in her masterpiece book, Women Who Run With the Wolves. Quote, she is the female soul. She is the source of the feminine. She is all that is of instinct of the worlds both seen and hidden. She encourages humans to remain multilingual, fluent in the languages of dreams, passion, and poetry. She whispers from night dreams. She is ideas, feelings, urges, and memory. She has been lost and half forgotten for a long, long time. She is the source, the light, the night, the dark and daybreak. She is the smell of good mud and the back leg of the fox. The birds, which, the birds which tell us secrets belong to her. She is the voice that says, this way, this way. Close quote. Men, I pray you learn to appreciate, as I am still learning to appreciate, that our women are not crazy. Not even the craziest of them. We tend to think of a woman as something that should make logical sense to our brains. And when she doesn't, Rather than revel in her alluring mystery, we wave her off with a hairy hand and call her crazy, high maintenance, stupid, illogical, weak, emotional, unstable. Or we blame our overwhelm on her PMS. We've grown up fearful of the feminine nature because we don't understand it and never will. We're not supposed to. The feminine essence of being is by its nature unbound by any reason or logic that could possibly contain it. We demean the feminine and women with everyday misogynistic slang that we men often sling at each other without even noticing, like pussy, bitch, cocksucker, motherfucker, whore. I've done it my whole life, and I still sometimes catch myself. Our fear of the feminine has made us men who recoil when a woman cries. Her tears don't make sense to us. Her tears often don't make sense to her either. We think logically and want to fix the problem we understand. But what she's saying is wrong isn't what's actually wrong. Even if it is, it's not often a technical solution she's after. And we know this because solving her problem our way rarely resolves her discontent, which drives us mad. Her logic mocks ours. Fortunately, I'm learning that our women don't need us to fully understand them anyway. They know our compartmentalizing man brains couldn't possibly grasp their true complexity. What women need from us is our strong, mature, unwavering masculine presence. That deep, reassuring look in our eyes and a confident stance in our bodies that silently speaks our masculine vow. I've got you. I'm here. It's going to be okay. I love you. The only thing we need to understand is that a woman is not a defective version of a man. She is our spiritual Mount Everest. If we are worthy and approach her with awe and humility, respecting her mystery, she will yield to us the most exquisite vistas of beauty and wonder. But if we underestimate and think we can conquer her, she'll freeze us in our trekking boots and flick us off her flanks like a snow tit. <laughs> 
Men, remember, it is not our job to understand women. It is our sacred duty to simply love them. Thus ends chapter three of Choose Your Everyday Reliefer. The next chapter, chapter four, Embracing the Ache of Loneliness. Find it in the next video. I'm Brian Reeves, the author. Again, subscribe to this channel for future coming chapters of Choose Your Everyday or Lever, the best-selling book, and I'll see you in the next one.